Hey Valley Middle, welcome back to another math lesson. Tonight we're going to be talking about how you change decimals into fractions. We're going to kind of go back the opposite direction. But let's start off as always with something fun. Uh, tonight uh, is a disgusting but interesting question. What's the weirdest thing anyone has ever coughed up? We get back to that momentarily. Uh, let's do this target officially tonight. Our target is I can write decimals as fractions. Let's do this thing. Haley Marie needs to buy 3.25 gallons of gas for her scooter and 0.5 liters of oil at Gus Station's gas station. Unfortunately, Gus was messing around in Mr. D's math class and has no idea what decimals mean. Can you change these decimals to fractions so that he can help out Haley? There's a secret lesson in here too. Pay attention during my math class. Ah, what do you do? Actually, these ones here are pretty easy because we know that 0.5 is just another way of saying half, and 3.25 is three and a quarter gallons of gas. So I think anybody in this classroom, probably anybody in the school, could help out uh, old Gus with these uh, fractions. However, what do we do when things get a little more difficult? Well, let's first take a look at some a must know words. First of all, we got bar notation. I want you to take a look at this fraction here one third. You know how when you hit that in the calculator, you get 1 divided by 3 equals 0.33333? You can put a bar over the top of that first 3 just to let people know that that repeats. Okay? Uh, I'm going to do one other example. If your pattern was 0 0.121212121, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, you could also then take and just write that as 0.12 and put in a bar over the top of that too. See if I can do this. Oh, that's not exactly what I was hoping for, but I think you get you know what I mean. Um, I'll cheat. I'll put in a couple of these and then move it up. You just put it over the two digits that replete or three digits or whatever. Okay. Uh, next, there are a lot of known fraction landmark fractions, and I put them over here and. If you don't know these, I would strongly suggest that you write these in your math notebook. Um, and I put them in order from largest to smallest in terms of decimals and fractions. But 7 eighths is 0 0.875. 0 0.75, of course, is 3 quarters. 0.6 repeating, just like this, is 2 thirds. 0.5, of course, is 1 half. 0.375 equals 3 eighths. 0.3 is 1 third. 0.25 is one quarter, 0.2 is one fifth. That would mean that 0.4 is two fifths, 0.6 is three fifths, and so on. I just put that 0.2 in there. Um, and one eighth is 0.125. I think if you minimally learn what one eighth is uh, and one fifth, and then the quarters, then the thirds, I think you'd be in pretty good shape. But these are the ones that I find most useful to know. All right, but how do you change unfamiliar fractions into decimals? For instance, 0.12. How would you change that into a fraction? Well, it's actually very easy. You just need to visit Conversion Cloner Land. It's a new decimal theme park where all the math students hang out. What? Okay, don't show your parents that part. They might pull you out of my math class. All right, it's actually very easy. You got 0 0.31, there's a decimal. You need to show it as a fraction. You, you just go over to Clonerland, you take a bar, and you put it right over the top of that dot. I gotta move it up just a tad. Um, but you, you, put, you connect the dot, make it into a bar, you put a zero under each of the numbers, put a zero there under the one, put a zero under the three, and then you put a one in front of the whole mess. So 0.31 is, I'm kind of a perfectionist, sorry folks. 0.31 is 31 one hundredths. It's that simple. All right, so 0.11, let's see if I can do a better job this time. Go to Clonerland, grab the bar, put the bar right over the top. Put a zero under each digit. And what do you do in the front? You're all done, right? It's 11 zeros. No! Put a one in front of the whole mess. So now you got 11 one hundredths. That's it. 
All right, one more. Hmm. 0 0.60, what would you do first? You're right. Get rid of the decimal and put the bar in. Usually when I'm doing this with the pencil, I put my pencil right on the decimal and then I draw right over the top. In this case here, since I'm working with uh, the computer, I kind of have to slide things around, but I just take and put the pencil down, bam, make it into a bar. Put a zero under each number, put a one in front of the whole mess, you got 60 one hundredths. Cool, huh? You just did three fractions like that. However, this one here, 60 one hundredths, you have to reduce. So, 60 one hundredths is really the same as 6 tenths, and then of course if you divide those by 2, you can reduce that down into 3 fifths. So you have to watch for the reduction and make sure that you're simplifying fractions. Um, okay, let's take a look at a couple other ones here. All right, I want you to try uh, doing these. I'll do the first one for you, 1.7. Okay, this is a little different than the ones I did before. So I'm going to grab my cloner. I'm going to change that dot into a bar. I'm going to put a zero underneath it. And then I'm going to put a one here. And I've got one and seven tenths. The whole number stays the same. Nothing's changing there, right? Good. All right, you try 0 .4, uh, 0 0.4761 and 0 0.875, please. Go ahead. Okay, I'm back. Let's see. Got to buy a bigger bar here. Put that down. Put a zero under each of these digits. Looks like it's going to be a thousand, right? Three zeros. Zero. Zero. Put a one in front of that whole mess. And what do you got? You got four. This is the way you read it, too. Four and 761 one thousandths. Got it? All right. This last one here, a little bit weird, because it's going to require some reduction. Come on, duds. What's the matter? There we go. Get that down. We can put the zeros in. Again, a zero under each digit. Just that simple. It's like surgery. Doctors go to school for eight years to do this. I learned it in minutes. Precision, moving the mouse. Let's hope I'm never a surgeon because I think people are in trouble. Uh, 875 one thousandths. Unfortunately, you have to reduce that one too. Um, if you divide each by 125, which is the greatest common factor, you'll find out that that's 7 eighths. Okay? All right. Some to try on your own before we get to the ticket to the show. Go ahead. Oh. Sorry about that. Go ahead. I'm back. All right. This one here would be 3 and 411 thousandths. This one here I'm actually going to go ahead and do because I'm afraid you might have worked too hard. Did you do this and put all those zeros there? That would work, except for it's really much simpler. You could have just written 3, taken a little bar, and made it tenths, because those extra zeros don't really mean anything. Or you could have put the zeros in the 1 and taken and reduced it down, but it really is just three tenths. Remember, zeros don't mean anything over there. Uh, this one here does get reduced down to two and three hundred and seventy-five one thousandths you divided by one twenty-five. You would end up getting two and three eighths. Okay. All right. Time for the ticket to the show. Point six two five and nine eleven. Let's get a little crazy here and put a whole number in front of that. Make it 3 and 3.625 and 0 0.911. If you take and change those into fractions, that would be lovely. Let's get to the trivia question. What's the weirdest thing anybody has ever coughed up? Uh, actually, it was a bullet. This is weird. U.S. Civil War veteran coughed up a bullet 60 years after the war was over. Apparently, well, here it says 58, but the book said 60. Apparently, this guy here got hit by a bullet that ricocheted. It was lodged in his brain for 50 years. 
Um, actually, this is what he looked like when he got hit, I guess. But anyway, it was lodged in his brain for 50 years, and then he has a cough and a fit, fit, and he coughs up a bullet. That was the bullet. Okay, like I said, disgusting, but how weird is that? Hmm. All right, have a good night. Thanks for listening. Bye.